Welcome everyone! I can finally announce that the energy and predation update is finished. Here is what's new. Bibbits now leave meat on the ground when they die. That gives them access to a new source of food. They also have a diet gene which decides how carnivorous or herbivorous they are and how efficient they would be at digesting either pellets or meat. I've decided that if they go far enough on one side or the other, they could even lose energy digesting their non-ideal food, mimicking the fact that they would waste energy digesting an unusable food source. Now that they are able to access a carnivorous diet, I thought it was also crucial to allow them to hunt. They can now decide how violent they want to be when colliding with other bibits, hurting them and lowering their life. If a babit is hurt enough, it will die and leave meat on the ground to be consumed. It's going to be a tricky thing to evolve, since there is no distinction between races, so they could very well be hurting their own children if they are not careful. They will have to evolve some particular behavior to avoid that. In order to organically implement all that, I decided to rework the energy system so it's circular and realistic. The basic concept is simple. Everything passes energy. Energy covers everything from the energy stored in food to the energy used by bibits to move. The only way to gain energy is by removing energy from somewhere else. It's a closed system. Also, not every energy transfer is 100% efficient. When energy is lost through inefficiencies, it's released as waste. An example would be, when a mainly carnivorous bibit eats a plant pellet, they won't be able to digest it and they will release probably most of the pellet's initial energy as waste. Waste is then recycled back in the system to fertilize new pellet growth, closing the circle. The complete diagram looks like this. To help with diagnosing, I implemented a better way to visualize their brain in action. It's still very crude, but it's a moonshot further than my previous attempts. With this, I can watch their thought process in real time, while also easily seeing the structure they evolved to govern their behavior. I still have a problem when I try displaying more complex structures, but it's gonna come together someday. And finally, pheromones. That's where I hit the biggest hurdle, primarily performance-wise. I wanted the pheromone system to be visible and to be more than just a sprite lying fixed on the ground, so I tried using particles instead. However, considering the numbers of bibit that would continuously produce pheromones, the frame rate would drop drastically. <laughs> I tried a lot of things before settling on a solution, and that took me a lot of time. Bibits can now periodically drop pheromones of three different colors on the ground if they want. They also now have new input neurons, allowing them to sense the pheromones around them and evolve new ways to use them. An example would be a bibit following pheromones in order to find preys. I also wanted to address the big delays for this video. I realized that I was way too ambitious working on so many things at once, while working a full-time job and maintaining a social life. I can't keep being as ambitious and making one video per month. I have to either work in smaller batches or upload videos less frequently, but we all know that's not how YouTube works. As a result, I work on implementing one thing at a time, then making a short video about it. That should help me keeping a more regular upload schedule. I was maybe also considering making longer, approximately 10 minutes videos commentary on live evolutions once in a while, as these shouldn't take too much time to make. Let me know if that's something you'd like. So for my next video, I have a few ideas of things to work on. I'll let you decide which one I'll actually implement. So first of all, following a few comments on one of my previous videos, I thought it would be pretty cool to have procedural sprites generated at birth from the bibit's genes. As a result, every bibit would have a custom appearance that will allow us to infer some of his genes just by looking at it. Here's an example one of my friends and I developed. 
Here we could see how their diet would be apparent to a different mouth, their speed could be represented by length, and so on. It would solve a lot of my previous concerns of genes visibility. I'd find it pretty cool, but it would only be an aesthetic change. Something else that would really help drive evolution forward would be something like biomes, areas of the map where rules would be different, allowing species to specialize, like having an area where food would be scarcer or movement slower. One thing I've been wanting to implement for a while now would be trees or bushes, where food would grow more abundantly but in more concentrated batches. Let me know what you think. Also. Someone suggested allowing them to regurgitate food, to give them the possibility to share and display more cooperative behaviors. That would require me to rework the way consuming food works, but if I was to give them a proper stomach, or a scripted analogous, it would open for other interesting avenues. And finally, sexual reproduction. It would have required a lot of work to re-implement so I decided it wasn't of prime importance for now, but now it could be the time to add it back. After all, it would allow for higher biodiversity and gene transfers. Again, let me know which one you'd prefer to see implemented first. I'm uploading a poll in the description to collect your input regarding the few things I ask about in this video. I also want to announce that I'll work on making a release for the simulation very soon to let people enjoy it for themselves. I'll probably upload it to my Patreon where you'll be able to download it. Although I have to warn you that the simulation is computer heavy, so you shouldn't expect to run it anywhere. I wanted to especially thank the few people who actually decided to Patreon me following my last video. It's incredible that some people like this project enough to support me while I'm working on it. So I want to give a big thank to Chatkas, Kurox, if I pronounce it well, and especially Andréane Vallière, Moroji, and Alex Paramore. If you want to join them in supporting the Bits, the link to my Patreon is in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on the project. And again, thanks for watching.